So before I start, just a quick introduction. Uh, for those that don't know me, my name is Alex Benet. I work on the virtualization team in Lenaro, which is part of the core engineering group. I've been with Lenaro since 2013, and I mostly work on Quemu's TCG code, which is the cross-architecture emulation bit of Quemu. Uh, so as I work on virtualization, perhaps a better title for this talk should be Virtualization solves everything. This might be a variation of Maslow's hammer. When you work on Quemu all day, all problems look as though they can be solved with a little bit of uh, virtualization. So I'm going to approach this talk as a series of compilation problems. I'm going to explain the challenges of each problem and the steps we can take to avoid them. So let's start with a simple case that I'm sure a lot of people are familiar with the kernel compile. Now I assume most of us here work with ARM in the ARM ecosystem, so I'm probably fair to assume that most of us have done a kernel compile or two in our time. So about the hardest part of this setup is getting hold of a compiler. Fortunately, Lenaro makes ARM cross compilers uh, avail freely available on the website, and if you run a sane distribution, the chances are you can just install the cross-compile package straight from your system. However, kernel compiles are easy. Uh, kernel is a self-contained piece of software. Uh, apart from the build tools, we don't need to deal with any number of challenges associated with user space. Uh, the kernel doesn't link to any external libraries, so we don't have to deal with any external headers or even the eventual shared objects or static uh, libraries that you might want to link to, and you don't have to deal with tools like package config. So let's look at a simple test case. I'm sure anyone who compiles C has come across this one. This is the canonical Hello World. And this is the simple... Hmm? Uh, good point. <laughs> But it compiles, and that's the important thing. <laughs> this is the simplest you can get with the, uh, stand only the standard library involved. And indeed, cross-compilers usually ship with libc, so as long as you don't use anything out of libc, this compiles straight out of the box. So let's look at something slightly more complex. This is Hello World again, but this time we're using the glib library, so this is different from the glibc library, to do our output. Now even for native compilation, our GCC invocation is going to be a little bit more complex. We need to use package config to return the correct search paths for all the headers, and we also need to tell it where to find the libraries it's going to link against. So as you can see, once we give GCC the correct flags, we can quite happily compile our native binary. However, we can't simply call our cross compiler with the same set of flags. We manage the first stage of the build, but the link, uh, when we get to the link stage, it fails to link against the library. So to do this properly, we need to have multi-arch set up on our system. So let's look at how you do that. Now, I will say now this is very Debian specific. Other distributions do have similar ways of setting up these uh, coexisting libraries, but all these examples are for Debian. So let's, the first thing we need to do is tell our packaging system that we want to support an additional architecture. So this is quite simply done by telling dpackage add the ARM64 architecture. And after we've updated our package list, we can now install the uh, ARCH64 version of the glib um, development package. You can even install a whole slew of dependencies for a program if you've got your source repository set up. So here I'm installing all the ARM64 dependencies for cross-building Quemu. So now we have multi-arch set up on our system, we can continue. Now the first thing we need to do is we need to use a specific package config for ARCH64. So instead of calling the system one, you call the one for the architecture you want to build against. As you can see, the path is almost the same. The glib path is exactly the same, but there is an additional include path added for any architecture-specific bits. 
And the link path for the library we're going to link to is um, AR64 specific. And with our new multi arch setup, we can compile and link without any problems. Yeah, it all works. So let's look at some of the pros and cons of a multi arch setup. So Debian, in particular, is very good for supporting multiple architectures. There's about 10 official architectures supported by Debian, and there's a whole number of additional uh, ports you can use. Uh, Debian has a very active community, and it's got some excellent maintainers, including quite a number of Linaro people. However, there are some caveats to a multi-arch setup. So to be able to install a package, uh, from a foreign architecture, it has to match exactly the version of the host package. So even a minor update to the um, foreign architecture can cause the package to not be able to be installed. I believe this has been fixed in newer versions of Debian that are not quite out yet. Uh, also, multi-arch is relatively new, so while we're lucky that ARM ports are in a pretty good state, your experience can vary, and there are still plenty of packages that need to be made multi-arch clean. And it goes without saying, this is very Debian specific. So even though Ubuntu packages a number of cross compilers, uh, it supports substantially fewer architectures as first class citizens. Uh, and because the foreign packages have to match exactly, you can't just install a Debian package alongside the Ubuntu system ones. So before we go on, let's look at some of the other options. So the traditional solution has been to use a Chiroot. <laughs> So these are file trees with a cross compiler and all the libraries that do the right thing when you're called within the Chiroot. And the other options are some sort of cross build system, build root and open embedded are, are, are two well known ones. So Chiroots have been used for solving the cross compile problem for a long time, but they do have some issues. <clears throat> they're usually provided as part of whatever project you're hacking on. And usually they're just some sort of un uh, unsigned tarball that a helpful developer has put up on their website. They can be fiddly to set up, and generally in my experience, once someone's got a Chiroot cross-compile set up, they never touch it again. So it's never updated. At the other end of the scale, uh, you've got the full-blown embedded build systems. So example of this is, uh, these include uh, build root and open embedded. While they're excellent at what they do, um, they are usually building a full stack. So they will start by building a tool chain, building all the system libraries, and then usually they have some sort of project manifest and they will build all the user space that you want to have in that particular build. They're basically aimed at building a full distribution. And they're massive overkill if all you want to do is build a small little test case. So what's our wish list for building our test cases? Uh, we want to be able to have something that can concisely define a build environment. Uh, Multi-step manual setups are a big barrier to entry, and getting some sort of uber-automated script for people to download, uh, they're very tricky to write, and people are generally wary about running random scripts on their system. Uh, we want something that's going to be widely available across distros, because developers have very personal preferences, and you don't want to have to force them to install a particular distro just to be able to build things in cross-compilers. And finally, we want to be fully buzzword compliant because we are in the 21st century. So let's look at Docker. Now, Docker is a container-based system. The idea is that any particular service is packaged with all its dependencies, and then it's run in an ephemeral container. This is actually a kind of virtualization because the, uh, the application running in the Docker container sees only its own little world. Uh, in this case, we're going to use it to house our cross-compiling setup. So let's look at our definition. So this is the complete definition of a Docker cross-build container. I'll just go through the steps. So at the top, we start with our source Debian stable slim. So this is just a cut-down version of the Debian file system. The next two steps here, um, we're adding an additional repository. This is the mDebian repository. So the mDebian project packages cross compilers for a number of different architectures. I believe this is something that goes away with the next version of stable when it comes out because the cross compilers are packaged as part of the core distribution. Uh, this little step just enables the source repositories um, 
<coughs> for the packages. So that's very useful if you want to build, uh, install the build dependencies for a package. And then the same steps we saw before, we add the architecture, update, install our um, essential build packages. And in this case, I'm also installing the CREMU build dependencies. So there's a couple of things to note with Docker. Firstly, most Docker containers run um, as root. It's not really the real root of your system, but it's still a fully privileged in its own little world. So one fix for this is to uh, add a user to your Docker container that maps to the user in your system. You'll see why this is useful in a moment. The other thing is Docker containers on their own are a self-contained little file system. They don't have any visibility of the outside world. So a simple call won't be able to build anything in your source tree. So now we've created our container, how do we run it? So here is a simple invocation. Let's just go through the first step. So first of all, minus minus RM, that's just a, a Dockerism for saying, when you've run this container, throw it away. So when a container runs, it might generate log files, it might just put ephemeral stuff on the file system. None of this matters because the Docker container gets thrown away when it's done. The user line, instead of running as default root, I'm saying running as the user that's currently running in the host system, so that's me, and because I've already made uh, the Docker container available of uh, uh, aware of my user ID, everything maps across nicely. The minus V is the volume command, so all I'm saying here is map my current working, di current working directory to exactly the same place on the Docker container. Uh, and minus W says, and also when I run the command, uh, do it in that directory. And finally, I identify the Docker container I want to run. So this is a, a, a unique tag that was created when I built my system. And then the rest of it is the same cross-compile command as we gave before. And as you can see, it builds a successful ART64 binary. Well, this is all well and good, but as I've pointed out, there's occasions where multi-ARCH won't work. Uh, either multi-arch could be broken or the development environment we want to actually use doesn't support it. How do we get around this? If only I had some sort of cross-architecture simulator that I could use to run foreign binaries. And here we go. So this is running on my x86 system. Again, the same run command, I'm running uname. Ah! But according to my guest, I'm running on an ARMv7 system. Docker doesn't actually care what is in its root file system as long as it can run the binaries. So what we've done here is we've installed in the Docker root file system a copy of the Cremu uh, Linux user emulator. You try and run an ARMv7 binary, bin format miss goes, that's a foreign binary, I'll run it with Cremu. And then everything appears to be an arm. So in this system, I haven't even had to worry about doing multi-arch. The entire root file system is ARM binaries with ARM compilers and ARM native libraries. So there's a couple of caveats. Uh, bin format misc itself is not um, containerized. So you have to have bin format misc set up on your host system. So if your host system thinks Cremu um, Linux user is u in user bin Cremu arm, you need to make sure that the one you copy into the container is in exactly the same place. Is that a kernel bug? Hmm? It's not yet updated. <laughs> I think someone has posted patches once. It's fairly trivial to work around, and maybe one day we'll get around to doing it. Um, you can actually include, if your guest running in the Docker container uh, is multi-arch clean, a dynamically linked Quemu. But generally, it's safer just to compile your Quemu statically because it reduces the chance of it clashing with anything on the guest. And unfortunately, it will be slower than using a natively built cross-compiler. But it's still pretty useful. So let's look at the use cases we have for the Quemu build system. So why do we want to do this in Quemu? Well, the first one is uh, portable build recipes. 
So we have a system called Patch You that sits on the Quemi mailing list, and every time someone posts a series of patches, it will slurp those patches into a, a tree and then run a number of builds on them. Uh, because Quemu needs to support a large variety of, um, host, uh, of uh, development operating systems, we generally like to support the oldest LTS of every enterprise uh, OS, it runs those builds against all those systems. And this is actually fairly easy to do by creating Docker containers for all your guests. The other case that we're looking at now is trying to get better at building our guest test cases. So by default on x86, all the unit tests we run are built against x86, and we don't really exercise the cross-architecture side of Quemu. And this is generally tricky, because usually when people want to test, the first thing you say is, the first thing you need is a cross-compiler. And they go, oh, all right, can you not make it easier? So in the Quemu source tree, if you, write, if you run make Docker, you will get this big long list of things that you can build using Docker. I'll just give you some examples. So here's the first one, make Docker test build at CentOS 6. So quite often when people submit patches, they might have accidentally broken one of the older enterprise distributions, usually because they have relatively old libraries. And this way, when it breaks, you can tell them, just run this on your command line, and as long as you've got Docker, you can recreate the build that you've just uh, failed. This next one, make Docker test quick at Travis. This is basically building on the same Travis build environment that we use for one of our continuous integration setups. Uh, Travis, I think, is an Ubuntu 12.04, and sometimes when the test case fails only on Travis, but not on the developer's uh, system, they want to be able to reproduce it. Main difference between that is my Travis build system is eight cores instead of the two that they have upstream. Next, Docker test build at Debian ARM64 cross. So this is one of the multi-arch cross systems that I created before. This is useful because by default, if you're just building on an x86, you're not actually building all of the Quemu code. Things like KVM support are only built in for the native architecture that you're building on. But now, building a proper cross build, we build with all the KVM support in. Finally, here's one that's not, not actually in the main line yet, but I had problems getting the Debian PPC cross to work, but not with Debian PPC user. So I can use Quemu user, support the cross build, and everything's okay. So, in summary, Kernel compiles are the simple case. If you're building user space uh, programs, it adds complexity to your cross-compile setup. But this is actually solved, for the most part, with multi-arch. Um, however, sometimes that doesn't work, so we can use Docker to allow us to paper over the cracks. And if we really want to, we can combine Docker virtualization with Quemu for double the fun. And that... Is it? Do we have any questions? Uh, uh, do you do do you, do you know P root? P root. I've heard. Yes, I've heard of P root. It has been developed in ST, and uh, it's a kind of a ch root in uh, in user mode without the uh, need for. Uh, Privilege, root privilege, in fact, compared yes. to, to CH root. Yeah. And I think it does exactly what you, you, can, you are showing with uh, Docker plus QME. Is it? Yeah, it, it, it would be a similar sort of setup. I mean, Docker is essentially a glorified Chiroot, apart from the process isolation. But yes, you're right, you can solve this with, uh, with um, other solutions. Is Proot widely packaged? So one, of, one advantage of using Docker is all of the major distributions have Docker package, so this just works out of the box. You don't have to ask someone to install an additional uh, binary to get their system working. And the nice, the nice uh, property of the P root is that you can, uh, uh, you can uh, compile your, uh, your, uh, your, your code uh, using Q, QMU. This, this is one 
one solution, but you can also uh, uh, use the cross compiler as if you were using a native compiler in the virtualized uh, environment. You see what I mean? Yes. Yeah. It means that you, uh, you, you, you don't have the overload, uh, the overhead of uh, uh, simulating uh, the ARM processor. Yes, and, and in the cross-compile case here you in Docker, the, there is no overhead, well, apart from the, the yeah. minor overhead of running in, inside the Docker container. Okay. But the other thing that is useful uh, in the Docker setup is you can concisely describe what your build environment is. So it, with pRoot, you still have to have a tarball that you set up from somewhere that's got all your cross-compile in it. That's, that, that's the bit that where you say, oh, download this tarball and you know, put it here Does to run it. You have to install pRoot? You have to install pRoot and the root file system that you're going to run your uh, oh, compiler. Yes, right. you, you have yeah. to install a, a complete user around the... Yeah. yeah. And, the, and the thing that's nice about Docker is you can just say, right, well, we're going to base it on Debian and all you need is these five steps to add the additional bits that you need. Yeah. Not as much a question as a comment. Uh, we use a very, very similar setup, also using Docker for toolchain builds in TCWHE. And oh, when using uh, more closed environments, when you need authentication uh, inside container, like SSH keys uh, right, okay. is uh, the likeliest case. Uh, it is often easier to start a Docker container with an SSH server inside, so that uh, and then treat that as a virtual machine, which runs a uh, virtual machine running ARM code, and then SSH into that and run uh, build scripts uh, via SSH using uh, SSH agent forwarding, so that from inside of the machine, you have access to your private repos, you have access to other machines, which you might use for testing. Yeah, so the, I mean, the use case we're using here, the, the Docker container is really just an ephemeral thing that gets bought up for the uh, build and then thrown away. You can use it, as, as you say, as more of a, uh, a persistent self-contained environment. I know a lot of the uh, Docker people would say that running SSH inside Docker is missing the point, <laughs> and they would say there are other ways to do it. Uh, so you can export, uh, I've done it before, where you basically make your, um, the socket path for your SSH agent visible to the Docker container, and then you've got the same sort of thing, access to all your keys and whatever. Hey, uh, actually uh, I'm also uh, using that the Docker to uh, uh, avoid the installing that uh, cross-searching in my uh, em host environment. And yeah. uh, um, I'm also uh, yeah, uh, hitting the same uh, issue on the, uh, let's say, non-privileged uh, user uh, say issue on in uh, Docker container. And uh, um, I also would like to uh, share that the, the Docker image itself with uh, the other users. In that case, um, how, how did you uh, solve that? So in, in, the, in the Chromium build system case, yep. all the images just exist locally. So they obviously they use the, um, it, it pulls from Debian Stable Slim, so that just automatically pulls from the uh, Docker Hub. But you can actually set up your own um, Docker repositories, and that would be the, probably the easiest way is to set up a specific Docker repository to put your uh, specific set of tests. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, in. I mean that are, uh, please uh, show that are, uh, let's say, uh, adding the other user hack on the, uh, your container. Uh, that one. Oh yeah, th this one. So that uh, this one will be run in uh, container or uh, Docker. So file. yeah. So I, I I glossed over the detail slightly here. <laughs> <laughs> so we actually have a, a, a little in the Quemi build system. We have a, a little script that pulls together a Docker build, and what it actually does is it takes the, the um, this recipe that you see here, yep. and then it uh, creates a temporary copy of it, adds this onto the end, depending on what your real username is, and then 
uh, when it builds the, the um, container, it's just set up for the user on that system. Yeah, in that so. case, but the, uh, if we add this, uh, the container image, it's a build for each user, is that right? Yes, that's right, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. But it's only a little different. So basically, the root um, yeah. uh, image that it uses, everyone is based on that, and then it's just the local set of changes that it's made. So in this in this case, yes, there is a, a bit because it's installed a bunch of dependencies, but it's not actually that that larger change. Okay, thank you. Okay. Hi, can you can you go to the page about the the make Docker test build? I mean, about the QMU oh, test. Oh, the example ones. Yes. Uh, that, those ones. Oh yes. Yeah. So this is already in the QMU source tree. Uh, these three are. Okay. Uh, this one's uh, still in so patches. But what yeah. is the requirement on the developer machine to run the, this? So the requirement is basically have Docker installed. So as long as you've got the Docker daemon installed, and, and most uh, same distributions, if you just install it, will automatically get so the daemon up and running. where are these images from? I mean, like the CentOS 6? Uh, so yeah, so these all get pulled. So CentOS 6 is pulled directly from the Docker hub. Travis is pulled from Travis's uh, own, well, it's a, a Quay.io. But you, these are all specified in the Docker files. So if you go into so these images are not Quamio specific. They're not. No, no, they're not. The, the changes that have been made to them to add the build dependencies are Quamio specific. But the root file system that they're all built on is um, based on. Yeah, I'm just uh, wondering uh, what I should do if I want to do something similar in my project. I mean, to yeah. So um, if you look, <laughs> if you've got the Quamio source tree. Okay. Uh, tests Docker, everything under there is what's done. And there's a, a docker.py little script that just automates some of the build steps. And then there's some Docker file, example Docker files for all the various bits we build. So look in there and, and Thank you. find it. Uh, is that the uh, QM upstream has a, uh, the, this option? Yeah, the, the, these three are already upstream because uh, oh. Apache uses these. Um, th this is just w one using user. I just haven't upstreamed those patches yet. They're, they're still being reviewed. So uh, one thing I didn't quite get for the Debian ARM64 cross um, image, that is a native ARM64 image, as I understand it? No, the ARM64 cross image is a multi-arch image. So it's, a, it's an x86 image with the ARM64 cross compiler and the ARM64 libraries and packages installed in that image. Right. You're Right. So you, you also mentioned the other case, that, which is not this one apparently, where you have the would, where you could have a native ARM64 system and then an x86 to ARM64 cross compiler instead of user bin GCC. Yes. Right. How would you set that up with Docker to to just replace the compiler? It's a good job I thought of this. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, we it, it's a it's a little complex, but this this is basically an abridged version of the setup script. So we run a um, a little Docker.py uh, script. Well, if you've got a dot pre, it will run that in the Docker build context. So this I mean most of this is all boilerplate. So it's just sort of checking that you've got the tools that you need, and then runs uh, this line here: dev bootstrap and bootstraps Debian into the file system. And then the actual build, this says, I'm not, I'm not basing this image on anything. Everything in my Docker build context add. So this is the directory you're in when you run the Docker build. So that includes the entire Docker file system and our copy of um, Quemu. This is just a little hack for to bootstrap so it doesn't try and mount something when you, when you run the script. This is the second stage, so it just runs to bootstrap second stage, and it's just like setting up a normal um, Debian file system at that point, and then finally runs, runs the update and installs the build dependencies. So. No, but, but you still have to, like, then if you install the <coughs> x86 to ARM64 cross compiler into that, it will not be called G user bin GCC, it will be called user bin... So in, in this case, your user bin GCC is an ARM binary and targets ARM. So this is a right. this is for setting, a, setting up a fully foreign root file system. So the only x86 binary in there is the QEMU static that allows you to right. run so that. So the, the, the case that I've used on non-Docker systems before that I want to replicate with this is 
where I have a fully ARM64 root file system except for user QMU and GCC and bin utils and make and bash. Right, okay, so it's a sort of hybrid yeah. profile. Yeah. That, that's what, what yeah. you have on, on your system, which is not Docker-based. Perhaps, to perhaps Docker. this would be better if we take this um, outside, because I think we're just about to yes. run out of time. Yep. Okay, well, thank you very much for your time.